I still remember the day I married Margaret. I was 25 years old, full of dreams, and a heart brimming with love for her. Our wedding was a celebration of our deep connection, a bond that felt unbreakable. We were both starry-eyed and eager to start our journey together. As the years went by, our love bore fruit in the form of two beautiful children. Becoming parents was a milestone that brought us even closer. We navigated the challenges of parenthood hand in hand, cherishing every moment with our kids. But now, as I reflect on the past decade, I can't help but notice how our relationship has changed. It's like the fire that once burned so fiercely between us has transformed into embers that barely glow. Our interests have diverged, and the things that once brought us together now seem like distant memories. But life has a way of changing people. My career in graphic design demanded more of my time, chaining me to a computer screen for long hours. Meanwhile, Margaret's commitment to environmental activism led her into the heart of communities and outdoor events. Our paths started to diverge, and the once rich conversations turned into superficial exchanges about work, chores, and daily routines. I love our children with all my heart, and being a father is a role I cherish deeply. However, the children couldn't fill the void that was growing between Margaret and me. The more time passed, the more it became clear that we were no longer on the same wavelength. Our conversations felt forced, our laughter hollow. As the years wore on, and the distance between Margaret and me grew, I found myself seeking solace in unexpected places. It was during one of those mundane lunch breaks that fate took an interesting turn. I met Nancy, a strikingly beautiful co-worker from the adjacent office. Nancy and I started to frequent the same local cafe during our lunch breaks, sipping coffee and engaging in conversations that felt surprisingly effortless. The more we talked, the more I realized we had an uncanny number of shared interests. We would dive into discussions about American football and baseball, dissecting games, players, and strategies as if we were seasoned sports analysts. But what truly surprised me was Nance's depth of knowledge when it came to sports, weaponry, and cars. She wasn't just a casual observer, she had a genuine passion for these topics. Her insights into the intricacies of different firearms and the mechanics of high-performance cars left me both impressed and intrigued. Nance's enthusiasm didn't stop there. To my amazement, she was an avid video gamer, effortlessly navigating through console games and even sharing her own gaming anecdotes. Her competitive spirit and love for gaming were aspects of her personality I hadn't expected to discover. As our lunchtime conversations evolved, I realized that I had found a kindred spirit in Nancy. Our talks went beyond the superficial, delving into our thoughts, dreams, and even the challenges we faced in our respective careers. The ease with which we could discuss a wide range of topics was both refreshing and exhilarating. I felt like I was connecting with someone on a level that had eluded me for a long time. But as my connection with Nancy deepened, so did the conflict within me. I was torn between the loyalty I felt towards my family and the unexpected bond one was forming with Nancy. I found myself grappling with guilt and confusion, wondering if this newfound friendship was a betrayal of the commitment I had made to Margaret years ago. As the days turned into weeks, my interactions with Nancy became an oasis of understanding and connection in the midst of my fading marriage. She was a breath of fresh air in my increasingly stagnant world, a reminder of the excitement and intellectual stimulation that had drawn Margaret and me together in the first place. Yet, I couldn't ignore the reality of my situation. The path ahead was uncertain, and I knew I had to confront the choices I was making. As my heart wrestled with conflicting emotions, I found myself standing at the intersection of duty, passion, and the desire for companionship. 
my journey was far from over, and the decisions I would ultimately make would shape the destinies of everyone involved. The week Margaret had planned to spend away with the children was quickly approaching, and my mind was a storm of conflicting emotions. My connection with Nancy had continued to grow, and in a moment of vulnerability, I shared with her the upcoming separation. Nancy's response was surprisingly warm. She sympathized with my situation and offered an invitation to her home. She assured me it would be a friendly gesture, a way for us to spend time together and unwind. Despite my inner turmoil, I decided to accept her invitation, viewing it as an innocent distraction during the week. The evening at Nancy's house arrived, and as I walked through her door, I felt a blend of excitement and apprehension. We conversed like old friends, reminiscing about our previous discussions and sharing laughs. As the night wore on, I began to relax, grateful for the change of atmosphere and the company of someone who seemed to genuinely understand me. At some point, Nancy excused herself from the room. When she returned, she was dressed in a provocative red robe that left me momentarily stunned. She took my hand and led me into her dimly lit bedroom, a mix of desire and uncertainty swirling within me. The air was heavy with anticipation. My heart raced as Nancy's presence and the seductive ambience of the room surrounded me. As the light faded, the room was plunged into darkness, with only the gentle moonlight filtering through the curtains. Conflicting emotions raged within me, caught between my loyalty to Margaret and the allure of the present moment. In the dimly lit room, Nancy's closeness seemed to intensify every feeling, every suppressed desire. Nancy, who was in full control of the situation, she was malleable, very soft. I just had to do as she said. In the dark, I could only see her silhouette. After a stormy night, we went to sleep. The morning sun gently crept through the curtains, casting a soft glow across the room. I blinked my eyes open, my mind slowly emerging from the haze of sleep. As the fog lifted, my thoughts began to focus on the events of the previous night. The memories played in my mind like scattered puzzle pieces, each fragment revealing a piece of a complex picture. I turned to the side, my heart pounding as my gaze settled on the slumbering figure next to me. The reality of the situation hit me like a sudden jolt. Nancy was not the person I had believed her to be. It was as if a veil had been lifted, and the truth had been unveiled before my eyes. My heart raced, panic coursing through my veins. I felt a mix of shock, confusion, and a sense of betrayal. My mind struggled to process the revelation, and my thoughts spiraled into a chaotic whirlwind. How had I not seen the signs? How had I allowed myself to be so blind? Nancy was a man. Fear took hold of me, and an overwhelming urge to escape washed over me. I quietly slipped out of the bed, careful not to wake Nancy. My hand shook as I gathered my scattered clothes, my mind racing with a flurry of emotions. With my belongings in hand, I made my way to the front door, my footsteps quick and urgent. The weight of the situation pressed down on me, and I knew I had to leave. As the door clicked shut behind me, the cool morning air hit my face, grounding me in reality. I stood on the doorstep, taking deep breaths as I attempted to regain my composure. The truth I had uncovered was a startling revelation, one that had shattered the illusion I had constructed. The conflicting feelings of disbelief, anger, and a gnawing sense of vulnerability swirled within me. Regret and shame joined the mix of emotions as I grappled with my actions and choices. I had allowed myself to be drawn into a situation without fully understanding the truth. The weight of my actions and their implications hung heavily over me. For three days, I found myself locked in isolation, my thoughts and emotions a tumultuous sea. I stayed home, staring blankly at the walls, 
the weight of recent events pressing heavily upon me. The revelations had left me feeling adrift, disconnected from the world around me. Then came the call from Nancy, a lifeline in the darkness. She asked me to listen, to hear her out. Reluctantly, I agreed, my heart still heavy with conflicting emotions. As we talked, a sense of clarity began to emerge. I realized that despite the shocking truth, Nancy was still the person I had connected with on a deep level. Our conversations resumed, growing more frequent. Gradually, I came to understand just how much I missed her presence in my life. We met again, and in that meeting, we made a decision. We chose to explore the possibility of building something new together. The path forward was not without its challenges. I knew I couldn't deceive my wife any longer. With a heavy heart, I admitted the truth to her. Her response was a mixture of anger, hurt, and a deep sense of betrayal. She told me that forgiveness was not something she could grant me. Despite the turmoil that followed, my life started to take a new shape. I now live with Nancy, our shared experiences forming a foundation for a new chapter. Our conversations were never ending, spanning topics from sports to the intricacies of life. We watched American football games and attended baseball matches together, sharing in the excitement of competition and camaraderie. In the evenings, when boredom set in, we turned to video games, indulging in a shared love for gaming. Laughter and banter filled the air as we competed in virtual worlds, the screen illuminating our faces as we navigated through various challenges. Life with Nancy was different from what I had known before, yet strangely familiar. While my actions had caused pain and upheaval, I couldn't deny the connection we shared. We had both been searching for something, and in each other, we found a kindred spirit. 